They often say getting fit and healthy is a sacrifice, and that's true, but there's levels to this. Let's talk about this for a second. Sacrifice means you sacrifice the present you for the future you. So the present you wants to enjoy this tasty treat, but you sacrifice that enjoyment for the future you who you want to be more healthy and happier. But the next level is even better. When you get to the next level, the sacrifice no longer exists because you're not sacrificing the present you for the future you when you actually enjoy what you're doing. In other words, not eating the tasty treat or exercising is no longer a sacrifice because you enjoy it for the sake of doing it. In other words, both the present you and the future you benefit. That's the level you can reach when you do this the right way and you stay consistent. So look forward to that. At some point, no longer feels like a sacrifice. It's just something you enjoy doing. I like to paint that picture mm -hmm. because I want people to know what is at the end of the tunnel if they pursue this and they're consistent and they do this the right way. And it's a journey and you stumble and you'll go backwards. But if you do this long enough, you do this the right way, at some point you become those members that we would run into the gym who are yeah. 50s and 60s who've been working out for 20, 30 years and they just love doing it. It's it's not a sacrifice anymore to wake up early, go to the gym, to eat right. Well, that's it's the like, initial thought most people have. It's like, I'm missing out. You know? Right. Like I'm not. <clears throat> and you are at first. You are at first until you realize the, the true benefit and then you lean into enjoying it uh, the, the process of it. That's, that's definitely something that you have to put reps into in order to, yes. to feel. Yes. Do you, do you think that, do you think that's considered or go is the same as like just practicing delayed gratification just in general? And yeah, I think that's a good question, Adam. I think that's true for anything that, that has long-term benefit, right? right? Like, um, I think you learn that practice. So you develop that as a skill because you'll find, um, in populations of people that tend to be successful in other areas of life, that they tend to also find success in like uh, successful entrepreneurs, for example, are more likely to exercise regularly um, than like the average person. And it, I, I have to, I have to believe that, uh, that the skills that are required to be an entrepreneur. Yeah. Or to succeed as an entrepreneur, they carry over. Right. Yeah. And we've talked about this I don't know, how many times where fitness, if you pursue it the right way, is like a vehicle for personal growth. It's, it's like all these lessons you learn, they start to bleed over. That's what I mean. Almost all avenues of success require <clears throat> that, right? Yep. I mean, it's going to require some level of sacrifice, dedication, and delaying uh, the fact that you're going to get the payout, right? But uh, that's, I guess, that's the back, bl uh, back belt. I can't yeah, say black belt. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, level is when you enjoy even going through the journey of that to yes. get to that right result. Yes. you think part of that is too is just because you've you've practiced this delayed gratification in so many avenues of your life that you you understand that this is the formula this is the formula that applies to so many things therefore i can start to appreciate the hard work or the sacrifice yes. mm -hmm. because i know that it will result in this better version of myself a better life a healthier life a more productive life a better like all these things that will come with that I really do think it is, it's the same thing. And I think it, it cause I think about this a lot um, with Max, right? Like it's, it's hard when he's that young, like I'm not having these deep philosophical conversations. And so how can I do little things that uh, start to exercise that muscle? Yeah. Like yeah. To uh, teach him, you know, the, the ability to like, oh, we do these things <clears throat> and then we can do that to, to help him get comfortable with delayed gratification. And so, and, and I remember there, there was a, it was a study they did right on, on kids, like as far as the, one of the greatest predictors of uh, kids being successful is their ability to that one like, study. That yeah. The mushroom one, or the yeah. mushroom, the marshmallow, marshmallow, marshmallow study. Yeah. yeah. And I've heard people try and pick that apart, like any study you can do. Right. But I do think there's some, whether it's a hundred percent accurate or not, I do think there's tremendous value in that because I, again, I think it translates into fitness, I think it translates into entrepreneurship. Even not even in entrepreneurship, even in uh, you know climbing the corporate ladder. If that's the the, the path you chose, you are going to have to put a lot of years of work and being in the middle and grinding and getting passed up. The person and, that enjoys yep. the journey is going to go further than the person who's just looking at the goal or looking at what the future me wants. Now, and I get that that's the beginning, right? The beginning, you say this is what I want. Okay, I got to sacrifice all these things that I enjoy now whether it's, uh, you know, being sedentary or eating foods that I'm just enjoying in the moment, or maybe it's not working hard or studying hard, or, you know, maybe it's not being present with your kids. Cause God, I'd really like to just 
disconnect and be on my phone or watch something or hang out with my friends. But over time, I think if you do this long enough, you start to appreciate the process itself. And then what happens, it's beautiful because what happens is you're no longer sacrificing the present for the future. You are now giving, you're now gifting both the present and the future. Mm -hmm. And when you get to that place, you never stop. Yeah. You, you, you don't want to well, start looking at other aspects like uh, for growth. Potential, yes. Right. And that's, I think that's the exciting part is when you, when you finally go through that whole process and that journey, and then you're able to like and love the journey. Um, you, you start looking at other things. Oh my God. Well, I'm really deficient here. Or I could, I could improve a lot here and there's a lot of room for, for growth. And, and you get excited about venturing into that, uh, that, that journey, because you know, the payout, what that's going to be, but really it's about the, the work leading into that, that's going to benefit you so much as a, a whole. And I think a, a big, a big point is finding a way or learning how to reframe, uh, the inevitable setbacks and failures on along the way of the journey. Totally. Right? Cause part of the, the reason why people have, have a hard time with the delayed gratification is because they have a plan and they start to execute that plan and the inevitable <coughs> happens plateau setback mm -hmm. injury whatever Challenges. it may be a challenge happens yep. Yep. and because they're not seeing the return that they they expected they get discouraged and, and they quit versus uh looking at it as a, a time to reflect and go okay what am i doing wrong what can i do better oh learning from that and looking at that as an opportunity for growth and anticipating that this is going to be part of the journey. Yeah, I think it, you, it's uh, the reframing of that is the so key, important. The key, you said a key word there, inevitable. Yeah. The expectations are wrong. Yeah. If our expectations are that we will never stumble, you are going to be let down 100%. Yep. Everybody, it's inevitable that you're going to stumble. Watch a little, watch a baby learn how to walk. Imagine if the baby after falling, it's like, I'm never trying that again. You have, you're going to fall. You're going to fall as you learn how to walk. Everybody does. This is just how it works. So when you're on this journey, you are going to run to mistakes. You're going to plateau. You're going to find periods of time where I don't want to do this. Or maybe you do stop. Or maybe you do, you know, give in to the, you know, gratification that, you know, that hedonistic desire, whatever. And that's okay. That's actually part of the, that's part of what happens. That doesn't mean you, 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 you look to it and say, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to do this. It's like, well, I'm going to try not to, yeah. but inevitably it, I will stumble. Everybody does. Let me get back up and let's keep moving. You and know, that's just part of the formula. You know, it's funny. I had the thought about um, like, it, like a professional athlete. I've met some athletes before and, and I consider, I'm like, man, maybe we should bring them on the show. But I'm like, it's not going to be that great of a conversation because they haven't, some, some athletes I've met, like it just all comes naturally. Like it's a very mm. natural thing. Like they're just skilled genetically. Like it just, and they didn't face a lot of like serious struggle uh, along the yeah. way. So it's like, you know, for them to, to then articulate those pitfalls and it's, it's a really, that's, you know, that's a, a big challenge for them to convey because it, you know, for me, like it, coaching, it was all those struggles. It was all of yeah. the process and then how to overcome a lot of the challenges and the, and the hurdles that I faced constantly. And, you know, uh, I don't know. I, I think like in terms of what makes like a good coach, uh, especially it's like, it's it always seems to be the, the athletes that struggle <clears throat> a bit more uh, with, uh, you know, uh, these pitfalls and like trying to, to <coughs> overcome these things. Yeah. I wish I had a, a, I wish I had a really, I never had a really good coach. I, like when I look back at all my coaches, that, that was one of the things that I, I missed like out on, on is having like a, God, really, a good coach could be tr life changing, I know, especially coming from a guy who really didn't have a great father figure. In his Oftentimes life too. that's what happens. Yeah, like, I had, yeah. I had maybe two, like really, really yeah, good coaches. Yeah. Cause I mean, it would have been so not, I, you had, you had good leaders, good managers. Uh, moving up in the in like the fitness space or whatever. Oh yeah, well, I mean this, I'm talking about young years, right? Yeah, when I'm playing yeah. sports, I'm playing sports yeah. my teenage years and stuff like that. By the time I get in my 20s, I met other good men that were leaders that, that were you. more more so that were my peers, but also like yeah. a leadership though, right? Like that I respected that uh, were were successful, knowledgeable, that shared, and I I got a lot from that. But I mean, like even going through as like a kid, because there was I, I was like the kid Justin's describing where. 
I wasn't the gifted athlete. Like I love sports, <laughs> yeah. um, but it was a it was work. It was a grind. Like I I was a kid who had to get up early in the morning to do extra things, oh, right? To be able to keep Same. up, yeah, to keep up with people and, and practicing in the house. And you know what's funny? The, I bet you right now I already know the answer to this. Do you think that was a gift? A hundred percent. Yeah. But that so this is my point is. I wish that I had a good coach or father figure that was teaching me how to lean even more into oh. that. Like I did it just out of sheer wanting to fit in and be good. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That yeah. was the driver. Yeah. But, but I wish I had a, like a father, like one of you, right. That was like telling me like what I was going through and going, Hey, listen, son, this is going to be something that this is going to be your superpower mm -hmm. because in life, this is like, this is what's going to say like that kid who's a gifted yeah. athlete that you're frustrated. This is you a can't, formula you can you can't over catch. Yeah. You're going to destroy him in life because he's not built. He's not learning how to build what you're learning to build right mm -hmm. now. And I can't, and like, I think if the right person, like a dad or like a, a coach or a good role model for me that was saying that, Ooh, I probably would have leaned even harder into that now later yeah. to your point uh you know in reflecting i look back and i'm like oh that was actually a blessing that i struggled and wasn't talented and had all these like hardships like i totally that's why when people ask me about the childhood stuff that i'm like oh man i, I wouldn't i wouldn't want it any other way as, yeah. as bad or whatever it was Isn't that interesting and, you mm -hmm. could take this what a great lesson right you can take this is a spiritual uh lesson um you can take a situation that most most people may classify as good or bad objectively like winning the lottery most people might say oh that's a good thing right or um you know struggling with uh, a chronic illness as a kid right that most people would say that's a bad thing but both of those could could be used for good or bad right winning the lottery depends on how you use it and how it works within you it could be a terrible thing there's lots of stories yeah. of how that broke up families and caused divorces and caused a lot of heartache. And then well, when I mentioned about chronic illness or, or, or challenges, there are lots of stories where the person used it, took this challenge and used it for good. So it's you know, life is very interesting and very complicated. I, I think it, I think it mm -hmm. becomes a superpower <clears throat> when you have the ability in those moments, when faced with that adversity, heartache or frustration or struggle, uh, the, the person who knows how to, get to that place of reframing and looking at it differently faster. Like that's such a skill. And, such and, a and, skill. And if you can develop that, like what that's going to do in life for you is, is so unbelievable. That's why one of my favorite uh, Chinese proverbs is that the one about the guy with the son that falls off the horse. Yeah. And, yeah. And like, and, doesn't go to the draft. Yeah. He's go, like, I don't know if go to the draft. Yeah. 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 You know, maybe, maybe, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, it's like such a, it's such a great example of like, you know, how, how life ends up panning out for you is that man, but if you have the, and the other thing too, that's so important is like, whether you think you will or you won't, you're probably right. So if you had this attitude of like, I'm never going to get anywhere in life because this happened to me, I'm, n I'm never going to, because of this disadvantage or, yeah. oh, you know, you, I'm not privileged. This person's so like, if you, yeah, you're right. If you have that attitude yep. that you're going to fail, I hate that's like, what, you, you're going to, it's going to come true. That's 100%. what makes, that makes, what makes me so upset about the, 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 privilege, target. the whole privilege conversation. It makes me upset because, um, there's a whole, I mean, we can make an unlimited it's not that it's, we not can make an, it's not that it's not true. Well, it it's that it's unhealthy. It, it's a it, terrible way to look it, at it. It actually, it, terrible. And, and it could you be could true. create a different outcome. It could not be true. There's, there's an unlimited amount of potential privileges or, or, or disadvantages. And then where does mindset play a role, right? Like, you know, you could say, um, you know, I, I grew up in this situation that was so tough. Oh, that's a, that's a disadvantage. And it's like, no, 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 that actually propelled me to become this person later on. Well, well does that mean that it was a privilege mm -hmm. or did you turn it into a privilege? Like, what, what is that? Listen, so what, it, what is mindset you, playing all uh, that? Doug, Trying to make a list. D Doug might've grew up in a more privileged life than me, <clears throat> but there's a kid who grew up in a less privileged life than me. And there's a kid that, and there, there's an example of somebody who was less privileged that outperformed the <clears throat> other person. Like there's always that example. So why would I ever want to teach that message to a kid because then they start to confirm that belief of like, oh, they're all privileged and lucky and I'm not. Well, okay, son, there's yeah. someone else who's even less privileged than you. Yeah. And someone even less privileged than that. And, and there's also a story of someone in that position <laughs> that overcame all that and became something great. Yeah. So why would you even put that in your head that that matters? It doesn't matter. Yeah. In fact, if I could teach you to reframe that, you know what, it's gonna be an advantage to you because you're gonna have, because you're less privileged, you're gonna have to build different skill sets and traits and characteristics about you that is going to propel you in life and it's going to serve you more later. Yeah. And that's how I've learned to look at it is that, man, I'm so lucky 
that I went through that because it trained me when other kids were not worrying about what's going on with their parents because <coughs> yeah. their parents had a great relationship and they had all the things they want. I was having to think about those things it, as a 11, 12, 13 year old. Therefore, it trained that muscle when I got into real life. And you could have, yeah. yeah. you could have used it in a way that was terrible. Right. right? It could have, you could have become a statistic. Huh. Uh, you know what that yeah. so i wish we could just bring you know somebody in from medieval times and be like you know, can you describe your everyday life <laughs> yeah, dude, dude. and then try and like what? throw the privilege card for know, me it was there. for me it was easy because i was so close i was not far removed from like uh my, my dad is an immigrant very poor his dad was i mean when i say poor we think poor here like I, i'm talking about like grandfather didn't have clothes. Yeah, they sometime. all lived. How many people lived in one house? Well, I mean, literally, literally, my grandfather didn't have clothes or food sometimes. Okay. My dad, you know, he slept in a bed with his siblings until he moved out when he was 19. And they would sleep, one person would sleep head to foot this way, the other person would sleep this way. And they'd put two twin beds together. My grandmother put a big sheet over it so they could all squeeze together. You know, when he was a kid, his he would wear she would get him shoes that were too big, and eventually he would outgrow them, and then she'd cut the top, the tip off, and they'd become like sandals. Like this is how <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, this is how he grew up. You know, and yeah. so I was so it was so close to me, and I would see these pictures and hear these stories. It was really easy for me to be like, oh, okay, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I could see now. You know, you know what's going. On. And I also see my dad show up and my mom. You know, I see them show up every day and you know work and be happy and. You know, not not complain and, and this is what this is why work I think together and part know. of why I think we're we are all so passionate about training and exercise and like fitness, right? Is because it's one of the most amazing vehicles to train that in anybody, yeah. regardless of your background. Listen, you can train you, that mindset. You, you can sharpen it. You embracing the journey of weightlifting completely, like every bit of it, all the inevitable I'll, struggles and like that. Like yes. it's, it's the, one of the best. Practices. I'll tell you right yep. now, I, I know you guys will, get, will agree with me. The one thing that someone could say to me, which would, I would guarantee, I would know they were going to fail in the gym. I would know if they came to me and they said, I have terrible genetics. My body won't respond. This is not going to work for me. Mm -hmm. you, yes, it won't. It absolutely won't. I don't care what their genetics are. I don't care what their situation is. When someone came to me and blamed it all on right. these circumstances they had no control over, because you would get that sometimes, and I would try and change them out of that. But if the person stayed there, then there was nothing I could do. That's why I love that quote. Whether you think you will or you won't, you're probably right. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if you come in with this attitude that I have terrible genetics, I can't see results, I won't do this, it's like, uh, yeah, you're right. And I'm yep. not, yeah. I'm, just because I'm a trainer, it doesn't have as magic. Like, I can't yeah. come in here no. and like... You have to learn to change that, reframe that, have a different they mindset. They already drew up their destiny. There yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah that's totally. the objective. Today's YouTube giveaway is Maps Split. In order to enter to win, leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and then turn on notifications. If you win, you'll notice in the comments section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Anywhere, Maps Hit, both 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I, uh, um, speaking of which, uh, I got to read to you guys. Did you guys see that post on our forum of, um, it, it was one of our forum members talking about clients and stuff like that. Um, this young lady, uh, Iman is her name, did this post and posted some pictures and we'll share them, uh, on the YouTube channel, but here's what she wrote. It's pretty amazing. She says, um, your macro setup and which maps program you follow doesn't matter. But then she goes on. Okay. That's an exaggeration. They do, but not nearly as much as you think posting this. Cause I learned this lesson the hard way over these past years. And I'm hoping this helps someone on their journey. I see so many people in this forum freak out about their body fat percentage and the nuances of the diet. And it pains me because I was once there for years. I struggled with terrible gut health issues, bloating, skin problems, and digestion. You name it. It made me, it made no sense to me. I got great sleep. My macros are perfectly dialed. I followed maps programs. Why didn't my body respond? Because I was obsessed with my physical health and neglected so much else. I prioritized getting to bed over time, spending extra time with loved ones. I prioritized workouts and perfect meals over planning trips or partaking in social events. I was obsessed with my gut health. I spent thousands of dollars on supplements, tests, and protocols. I felt like I was battling against my body. All to come to find out that my fixation on my body was making it less healthy. And then she posts pictures of herself over a six month period. The first picture, 147 pounds, is her obsessed. The second picture, since six months later, she's six pounds leaner and looks significantly better <laughs> because she took her obsession 
off of everything and kind of did it in a more healthy way, obviously through our advice. I Pretty love cool, that. right? That's really that. cool. Really, really cool. It also so. it highlights, I'm, it's, I'm great. You're, I'm glad you're sharing this. We probably should do a better <clears throat> job of, of sharing more of what goes on in the forum with stuff like this because we got oh. asked um, when we were, <clears throat> excuse me, when we were in Florida, we got asked by trainers, uh, like, how do you guys build the business and not use before and after pictures? Oh, yeah. Um, and how, cause that's like, that's like the tried true <clears throat> formula for doing that. And yeah. like, everybody's been taught to do that from a marketing perspective. Why? And it does work to sell shit. And it does. And it, yeah. and it's, and the reason why is because we've always said that that's, it's counter to the message that we've tried to be, be presenting for, you know, eight, eight, nine years now, which is this getting away from this body obsession and focusing on exactly what this, this journey, but yet I love, and, and, and then we, and this is what we told them is like, we encourage them, you know, get a, get a forum, get a group together and allow them to organically share yeah, that wrong. instead of us taking a picture yeah. of her using just the before or after and saying she followed a maps program yeah. and did this diet yeah. and look what we did for her in six months. It's like, allow these people to, to learn from the message that we're, we're sharing with all of them and this community, and then allow them to organically talk about their journeys through this process. And I said, I just think that's a far better approach. If you, if you truly believe in the same mission that we believe in, <laughs> we're trying to shift the industry in a way that is healthier and better for everybody. It's not just body obsessed and aesthetic obsessed and cosmetic obsessed. And, and, and part of that means we, we might have to sack back to our, so great full circle, right? Delayed gratification, right? Instead of the instant gratification of revenue and money and sales, yeah. because we could use and leverage those things to sell more stuff. Cause we have before and afters. Yeah. We have thousands and of people have, have looked, you know, dramatically different in, in these great like transformations, but it, like, we're just interested in that journey. That yeah process that the way that they're able to mentally you know show up yeah. like consistently yeah. and the most important part of that entire before and after <coughs> is the message that she writes yep right it's yep. not the picture of what she did in six months it's the man this because that that's life-changing yep losing five to seven pounds up or down or a little bit more abs yeah. or a little more buff like that's not life-changing what's life-changing is making that connection and, understand. and then being surprised by the whoa, I look better. Oh, yeah, because I'm. Oh, that I'm happened. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I love that. I I, yeah. I love that too. You know, think. Uh, I Katrina asked me a question. Sal, I was going to ask you today. Um, we're talking, and she uh, <clears throat> asked me this thing about uh, leadership. She's like, you know, you and Sal talk a lot about all the staffs um, that you had and all the uh, trainers <clears throat> and stuff and and salespeople that you developed and things like that. And she goes, I don't think I've ever really heard you like tell tell a lot of those stories. And she's like, have you? Can you think of or tell me like a, a proud moment as a leader in in those stories? I was like, oh, that was a really interesting question. And of, co of course, I could think of something, but it made me think like, oh, that's a, I'll ask Sal like what he what he recalls or thinks of or what comes to mind when you think about all the teams and people that you that worked underneath you, and when you think of yourself and your development and where you're at in your career and your life, like. What do you reflect back on and go like, oh, I was really proud of that, that I, I was able to do that or we did that or whatever. Yeah, I got to think about that. Um, that's interesting because you, you told me earlier that you might ask me this and I had to think about this for a second. And um, you know, what's interesting about that question, Adam, is and this is just now as an older Sal, you know, older person, I can kind of reflect. I never, it was never a desire of mine to uh, to be the boss or to be a manager. So it wasn't like I, I, I never sought it out. It happened. Um, and then when I was there, I remember feeling, um, I remember the first club I, I, I ran. This is the, so that's, this is the memory that pops up. The first club I ran was, uh, club 529, uh, 24 fitness in Salinas. This was like a, one of the clubs that was like, they'll put you in there either to fire you afterwards, or let's see if you could turn this club around type of deal. Yeah. And the reason why they sent me there understandably was I was a kid. I was only, I think I was 19 years old, uh, when they gave me this club mm -hmm. And I remember I walked in there and I had this tremendous sense of like uh, responsibility and purpose. Like I, I remember feeling like so like, okay, I want to really do a good job with these these people in this club. I want to do a good job. And I remember my first all staff mate. Looking back, you know, I was a kid, and looking back, it makes me chuckle. It's like who did I think I was as a as this kid? But I remember my very first all staff meeting. I called everybody in the back, and I stood up on a desk. I really, really got up, and I gave this like this meeting, I didn't have any notes or anything. And I remember feeling very inspired and motivated. And I remember getting the whole staff kind of behind me. And that first team uh, that I worked with was, was uh, exceptional. It was a small club. It was one of the smaller clubs uh, in the company. 
but um, I remember we, we, we did a lot of great things out of there and there were some, some pretty interesting, some really good performances. And then the second thing I remember was uh, our good, our late friend, Larry Evans, a uh, good friend of ours. He had come to me um, to get an interview because he went to another club. Here's the irony of this, by the way, Larry, he is easily one of the best um, salespeople in the entire fitness industry of the world, period, end of story. Anybody who knows him will tell you the guy was, um, he was like the Michael Jordan of, of sales, just so gifted and talented that if you taught him the skills, it was like, you just, you're watching, um, like a, like a virtuoso, right? You know, that you worked with him. Yeah, no, I mean, he was referred, he was referred to as the Michael Jordan of, of sales and yeah. fitness. Like he just had, he was amazing to watch. Yeah. And so I remember when I hired him, you know, in walks in this, you know, this young dude and he's wearing basketball shorts and basketball Jersey and he actually got turned down for an interview uh, at uh, Capitol McKee because of his appearance. He walked in kind of relaxed, you know, Larry, his attitude, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came in and, you know, I, I saw something in him. And when he came in, I kind of shook his hand and I saw something in him and I liked it. And I said, Hey, come back tomorrow. Uh, but I want you to dress like you're actually serious about this interview. Cause I want to see if he, what he would do. And he did, he came back and he was dressed more professionally and we had a you know great interview. And, the, the the proud moment was that I saw through the the cover of the book, yeah, yeah. and I ended up hiring uh, what ended up being one of the best uh, you know performers ever that anybody's ever seen. So I, those are the two things that kind of that's really cool pop into my head. Yeah. How yeah. about how about you? What are yours? You know, there was a uh, <sighs> when she said it, it was a really neat exercise for me because it's not something that somebody had asked or I thought about uh, really in a long a long time. And of course, I can think of like these uh you know <coughs> emotional peaks where like there, we broke a record or yeah. taking over a club and turning it around and so with that but it was interesting that the one that felt the heaviest on me that i was like oh man I, that, I remember that feeling and that felt even better than those you know record moments and things like that because those i can think of those and those felt like a real high for the day yeah. or like that and then gone like yeah. that but the one that like had the most like you he, still get a feeling from yeah that evoked yeah. the most emotion was this this silly moment that i remember uh, going up to mountain view for a meeting at that time we had um eight uh eight other fitness managers that were a part of our district right so i'm going up we're meeting with our dm and we're we're sitting there and the reason why i think too this was a, a kind of a, a a big moment for me was that it was a time in my career where I was starting to get pretty discouraged that um, I wasn't getting promoted faster. I wasn't moving up the company and like, and I'm having this self-reflection moment of like, you know, is it me? Like I'm the common denominator. I'm not moving up. Is it, what is it? Is it my attitude? Was I blackballed for earlier stuff? And I'm like struggling with all that and really questioning my own self-worth probably. And I remember sitting in this meeting and there's eight other fitness managers. And here's this, the district manager who's leading it and six of the eight managers were my people oh, that you hired that, you that hired, i hired yeah. that yeah, i trained right. and 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 promoted and it was like this feeling of like oh man like i don't need like a, a title or this confirmation from somebody else that i'm a good leader i'm good at what i did because right in front of me i'm looking at you know almost the entire district you know what's so big about that is that anybody who runs a team knows this you, you gave away six of your top players that's right to go compete against you and, and, <laughs> and in your district and only people yep. that know that really understand like the like the like what, it, what are you thinking right what it Somebody takes say, yeah because a lot of, and but funny you say that because one of the things that that's what frustrated me about my boss at that time right. is he kept me in that position because of how valuable i was instead of elevating me and allowing me to go on well, and I'm be glad a, he did that because now you're here and, and, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and be me and let me be a peer of his yeah. and i knew better than that i knew better than never to be a leader like that and as soon as i had i mean that was part of justin uh -huh. moving on i remember when um i mean <coughs> justin was my top guy right hand man for many years follow uh, i took him from the hillsdale club took him over with me to the santa Teresa club crushed that club crushed that club and i was always cheerleading for him that he's the next guy in line would constantly be telling my boss like this he's the next guy he's the next guy he deserves his opportunity and uh you know i remember him getting overlooked and then i remember like the last time that he got overlooked and it was 
And it was, I mean, I felt disrespected. So I know he probably felt disrespected that like the people that got the position of, above him, like he was just, he was far better than I knew he was far better, more experienced, more, more educated. I wonder if any of those guys that got promoted ahead of you have the top fitness podcast. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. De Justin definitely, no, like, Justin made out in the yeah, story you know yeah, for sure. Yeah. But I remember then having this. I went all Achilles, dude. Uh, oh, yeah. You know, you know the movie Troy. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's, I'm just gonna do my own thing. Yeah. Well, that and, and that was such a never know your name. That was such yeah, a hard exactly. conversation for me to have. You know, talk about some one of the hardest moments for me too is that not only does my guy not you get knew her, he was you 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 saw him leave and you were probably well, like, I yeah, remember I see why. I remember encouraging him. Yeah. Saying that and talking about that, like go tell my top you guy. You could have selfishly sold him on sticking of around. Of course, yeah. yeah, or dangle the carrot and do those things. <laughs> yeah. But I remember going yeah. like, hey, dude, you, I mean, I get it. You, you go build your own thing. I think you'll be fine. You'll do great and stuff like that. And so not only do I not get him promoted in the club, but then I also lose him as if all that revenue and business out of out of my club and so yeah that was a that was a tough moment to to see him to see him go and do that but of course i mean this is it all played out the way it was supposed to and yep you know like who got the Wouldn't last have done it now? different yeah exactly <laughs> but we were just we were just talking about turning bad things into good things like it could have i mean someone might have been like i'm done i quit this i'm never doing this again or whatever i'm out of this industry instead you left built your own business yeah, which well, was hard well it was me yeah no yeah it's it's that's it. You know, how, how do we reframe this? How do we focus on the next move? Like, how do we, how do we take this and, and run and do something even better and greater? That's, that's just the always how it is. And, and again, like th this sort of mindset happens uh, along the journey for people in different ways. And for me, it was a lot <coughs> of sports and, and, yeah. you know, driving through that like complicated training process of like really trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And like, what I have to, do in order to get myself and elevate myself in all these different uh, avenues that I was pursuing. And, and it really is, it's, man, it's, it, it was frustrating as hell, but you learn so much. And then, you know, being in a situation like that, it's like, oh, pff, all right. Yeah. I'll just figure it out. You know, it's, a, you know, it's in, in, interesting about this conversation because some people will say, well, that's so insensitive. Some people are just suffering or they're struggling and it's, they can't do it or whatever. There's a way to communicate this with integrity and authenticity. And then there's a way to communicate this to be an asshole. Like yeah. you can be an asshole and be like, well, that's because you're not working hard enough. Get off your ass. You're lazy, you piece of crap, whatever. And you hear that on We're the internet all the time. people's hardships. No, no, yeah. no, 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 no. The truth is, yeah, it's fucking hard, man. Yeah, dude, I see that this sucks. There's only one way out of this, uh, in the right way, at least. The one way out of it is to like, you keep going. The other way is not out. You'll get deeper in what you're feeling. And, but I know how bad this is. It sucks. I can see that this sucks. That's the right way to communicate. You get all these like, you know, it's funny. You too. get all these masculine, you know, like pro, like alpha, whatever communicators on Instagram or social media. And they're doing it the wrong way, man. You're a pussy. You're weak. You're get up, get off your ass. Yeah. That's insensitive because, uh, you're, the, the person that's getting crushed, they're hearing you and be like, you, either either they're like, you don't understand me, you don't get me, or you piss them off. Maybe you get the kid to, to stand up on his own and figure it out. But I, I argue, I argue that that argument, the, the kid would have done it anyway, with, whether you argued to it with him or not, or told him that or not. Yeah, yeah. You know. So yeah, anyway, totally. I got to tell you guys about uh, or what what my my three year old told my my wife the other day, which is hilarious. So um, Jessica bought these little figurines that like depict like a family, so like mom, dad, grandma. Mm -hmm baby sister brother or whatever and so she's been you know playing with the kids with them and it's interesting to see i, I, I know you've seen this with with max where they where they play pretend and you they make little voices and they talk and <laughs> it's really cool to just kind of stay back uh -huh. and kind of watch and see what they say like what are they saying like what do they think the dad says what do they think the mom says yeah. or whatever so he's playing he's talking to the dad and he's like you know um you know, what fun do you, you know, what fun do you do with the family or whatever? And he goes, Oh, it's, it's, you know, the family, it's really fun. They cook dinner a lot and stuff, but sometimes mama burns the steak. <laughs> That's <laughs> what they remember. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she, she's like, all right, I guess, uh, you know. It's so interesting when they focus on, yeah, you know. Yeah, it's so hilarious. <laughs> it is so crazy. The, like the, the one thing that they picked up on of yeah. all the stuff. You when know, my so. oldest, my, my oldest is 18 now, but when he was little, I remember we asked him like, what is, what does Papa do? And I remember this was like a little point of reflection to me. It's like, mm -hmm. Papa works. 
And that's it. And I'm like, oh man, I guess it was. <laughs> and then you ask him, what does mama, what does mama do? And he goes, no, 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 no. And then that was another point. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, that's another point of reflection, you know? <laughs> These kids are they're, they're, yeah. they're great. Dude. That's so good. I, there's, there's, I bet you there's got to be like a cool, like fun. Um, I know uh, there used to be a show, right? The kids say the darndest things. You ever seen that? It was yeah. a Cosby. Oh yeah. fuck! It was a Cosby. I guess you ruined it for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a Cosby show. Dude. Yeah. But it was good. I think they actually it still was a good show. They might have still continued it with somebody with else. Someone else. I think they. I think yeah. they. They might have. But I know it was his thing for for the longest. Dude, time. I got. I I got it. Well, I know you guys know the answer to this. What's the one? Here's a trivia question. I'm sure you know the answer to. What's the one supplement or partner product that we work with that consistently runs out fast? It's always <laughs> gone. I go to reach in the bag right now, gone. Oh, the gummies. The Sheila the, the G. Yeah. Gone. Yeah. Of all the products that yeah, we yeah. work with, the Organifi Sheila G is gone. I know when we have it, yeah. it's gonna, we're going to run out. I think, he's, I, I think, I don't know where they're at right now. I don't know if you've looked on their website or not, but I know that it's even sold out on their level a lot. It's so. well, I think they crushed it because yeah. they taste good. I think that's that's a big part, let's be honest. The other part is I don't know you guys well, are reading are you guys reading what people are saying? Has there been a big buzz like in other yes. uh, in terms of like the biohackers and yes. everybody else like really highlighting the benefits of Sheila Called G? It. Cause called it. Yeah, because I mean I, knew I feel it. like there's a public awareness about it, which I, I knew it because I when they when they came out with it, I said on the podcast, I'm so excited. There's lots of studies behind this one. So Organifi, big player, promoting it. We started talking about it, and it wasn't long before people started putting advertising money behind. So I, it, it, I mean, it's it's a it's a it's a compound that has lots of studies that actually show that it has benefits. That it has is, there, benefits. is there any um, is there any negative to taking uh, a lot of these supplements in gummy form versus pill form? Well, the only negative would be that there's a little bit of calories in a gummy. Well, aside from that, that's it. Because it's like what three or five. That's or something. It. It's nothing. No, there's so. no other negative. That so like no. as far as digestion absorption. No, fine. Because I've always wondered. I've always wondered. I always <clears throat> felt like you know you take like a, a multivitamin that's a gummy or a chewy. It's like this can't. I'm, and then you take like a, a normal multivitamin. It tastes terrible. Well, it makes your stomach upset. Yeah. It's like <laughs> this must be working more because I have, <laughs> I have diarrhea. Yeah. No, the, the challenge <laughs> is when you put too many. The challenge is on the nutrient. Some nutrients just taste terrible. Yeah. So how do we put you know, how would we put 50 vitamins and minerals in a gummy and make it? They typically don't. There's four. Because it tastes so bad. Yeah, because some of okay, them just that, taste. That makes, because I tell yeah. you what, I, <laughs> I know you tease me that, but I'm terrible at like all, I mean, Dr. Cabral's protocol for me and all these, whenever someone gives me like a stack of things I have to take every yeah. single day, multiple times a day. And I mean, I have a, I struggle really with like being consistent. You need a with supplement it. bag, bro. Well, <laughs> part of it is this, the, the, the gummy thing. If I had all of them in like gummies, I swear to God, I, I swear to God, I would. Be, it's so easy. Yeah, it's a. We get a bag of gummies here always, and I know I take two of them and throw them out. They taste good going down. It's like I know. I don't need water to wash it down. It's not. I, I mean, I don't know. I, if the I could, if I could, bad. I would make every supplement that I need to take all in gummy form. I would like a like a big ass kid, dude. Yeah. And I don't care what you say. I bet you. I, I bet you. If they haven't done it yet, and if someone actually did a, a study on this, that the adherence yes. to gummies versus pills, right. I bet you gummies would crush, You're right. crush yeah. would crush. You know what? You know what? As far happened? as compliance, no, you don't need to study. Yes. You can already look at the market. So you know how this started, right? It started with kids' supplements, Flintstone. Right? Well, Flintstones were the chewables, but then they started making yeah, gummy vitamins from there. Is what I'm saying. Gummy vitamins for kids, and then what they saw was that were parents were buying the kids gummy vitamins and using them, and they were like, "We're getting more parents using this." Yeah. Than our tablets. So that's the that was the beginning of of these. At companies. my house, my airborne, my vitamin C, my elderberry, my what else do I have? I mean, I have all the gummy forms of it. <laughs> that's why I've been meaning to ask <laughs> you, like, am I am I am I losing out on anything the like my behavior by doing that? No. And it gets if it's, it's the same thing, it's the it's same just thing. easy for me to do. Yeah. And the only thing I wouldn't do in gummy form would be like a probiotic because uh you'd want to protect the bacteria. On yeah. its way to the colon, yeah, it needs and a little bit of time release. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, like something along those. It's not really time release, but it's, it's different right. science. Do they something like that. Did now, coded. Doug, maybe you know. <coughs> if you're looking at the, the. Typically, does gummy form cost more because it's a gummy form? Hmm. Probably. Yeah, that's probably that's yeah. probably the the knock. I would it? imagine, right? Because you could get it's whatever. I would pay. You the could extra. get the black tari Sheila G and just throw a capsule on it versus. Having to pay the R and D to make it tasty, yeah, uh, in a in a in a gummy. So that's probably because I was I I also saw our good friend Jordan Syatt did a uh, I, I've been meaning to watch it because I want to hear what he said. 
about uh you know creatine gummies and it was like you know poo pooing on it and i'm assuming it's because it costs more money yeah. i'm assuming it's because you can get creatine monohydrate listen, super cheap listen, and he knows form. this as well as we do because i bet if i had him in here he would agree trainers understand this at the end of the day which one is going to get what what is going to encourage which the behavior more yeah which okay so what's going to encourage the behavior more that's what i worry that's what i care about i don't care about which one is better on paper yeah. which one's my client going to do adherence uh, yes and, and a, i 100 you're right a yeah. gummy is far more likely to have the average person unless you're a pill fanatic like me yeah if you're not then who can, then I, I would never say that yeah. like if you're like oh i have no problem taking these 12 pills every day or this yeah. powdered thing and mixing it up and doing yeah. it okay then then okay but i know me yeah and that is a hassle. And I've done all the, the pill stack things yeah. and tried to like- The only person on I met- On Sunday, like, yeah. set it all out. Like only just, Doug is like me. Doug and I will do this. We'll take, yeah, we have it all organized. We'll take all our pills. Are you good like him? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. you are. So every Sunday I, I have a morning packet and an evening packet that I put together. In For the, the whole bags. week. For the whole week. I tried that. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I bought, yeah, yeah. I bought supplement. It's supplement prepping, bro. So you have meal prepping. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Supplement. Prepping. I know. I tried, I tried to do it and it got me through a, a couple like when we did Cabral and I had that yeah. protocol, that was how I did it. I was like, I, there's so many of these things I got to take. I've got to yeah. like plan this out or I'm going to fail. And I think I got to like three weeks <clears throat> of being pretty consistent with it. And then I just fell off. Or you, you take it to like ninja level like me where I don't even put them in packets because I like to adjust them on the fly. You oh, carry yeah. the whole I, on the fly. Carry the whole pharmacy with you. This guy's got <laughs> now go, you either call a it full pharmacy He's chopping it up. <laughs> yeah. I just get yeah. carpal tunnel from opening and closing yeah, this bottle It's either so many ninja times. level or it's dysfunction. That's yeah. one of those two things. I don't know. Hey, you know, which one. you were talking about uh, comments on the YouTube. I was actually on there uh, last night and, and going through all these comments. I actually, the, what prompted it was we had this meeting with uh, JT and Sage and they were talking about, man, it's so crazy. You guys is <coughs> comments that people are like, that they don't just like say little, like one thing they write these like, incredible you know That's stories the yeah they're just he's like the it's i've never seen anything like it. he's like i've never seen a youtube channel with that much it positive. is unique because this is for youtube if you, find me yeah find me a show i've never actually, seen one was, actually, show me a channel about that's like that. yeah actually real quick i'm gonna take a just a little left connected and we'll go back to what you're saying but i don't want to forget you want if you ever want to read the best comments you've ever read in your entire life on youtube okay they're like get moved watch a a like a worship music or like christian music video <laughs> and then read the comments no 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 it's really? crazy, really? bro. It's crazy. It's like, I just had cancer and I got survived or I lost my husband and what? this song's, oh, oh my like, God, bro. I was uh, going through the comments on some of this music and every comment was like somebody sharing a personal story. Like profound. That uh, was profound, bro. Wow. I had to pause so many times. I was sharing them with my wow. wife. I'm like, because YouTube comments are little, like huh. you said, yeah. typically you don't want to go through the comments, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. which is like you said, ours are pretty damn good. Typically. So I, uh, and this is a shout out to Darren um, because, uh, you know, it's been almost, I want to say it's been almost a year since we officially hired him and he's <coughs> been com continually to reformulating and improving and like the newsletter. And this was the first time I, and on one video, I think I've seen three different comments about uh, how much they love the newsletter. Oh, yeah. And so if you're not subscribed to the-, the It's mindpumpmedia.com forward slash newsletter. Yeah, free. It's free. It's so, a totally different form of yeah. media from us. And, yeah, totally different. And Darren, for a little bit of background, those that might not have heard me tell the story before, I we got connected 10 years ago when I first started on Instagram. And uh, he, had a, he had a fitness background. And he's, he's a writer, he's an, uh, an author and he's brilliant. And he would write these like very sarcastic, mm -hmm. like takes. He's super witty. Yes. Yeah. Very sarcastic tongue in cheek type of like post about like the fitness. And it just, they were so good. I mean, and some of them would like jab and hit home, like some of my stuff or mine. And I'm like, oh, this is really good. And I started <coughs> calling him and we became yeah. friends. And uh, I told him years ago, this was like eight years ago that I said, man, one day, I want to do something with you. And I said, it's something in, I said, the business that we're building, I hope that we can. And I thought back then we were going to write uh, some book together that was funny and fitness related with that. But we hired him to actually write our newsletter. And so if you haven't read it, it's, it's really entertaining. And then there's recipe in there and there's like news what's going on. And so it's a, it's a really cool newsletter. And again, it's, it's, we're continuing to evolve it, improve it and add value to it. And so that's the goal. It's is totally different media too. It's not like, like the podcast where it's like a different form of mind pump media. Yes. Yeah. Really cool. I really, um, the goal is yeah. to really grow it into my goal was to create a, um, you know, 
hustle, morning brew type of version of a newsletter that is fitness uh, related and that people love to read every day. And we're, and obviously I have to first prove the model that people Dude, are willing to read it, you know, every other week. Speaking first. of comments, by the way, did you see the comments under the, when we, when we interviewed the brain FM, the brain FM CEO? Oh no. The comments underneath? No, I didn't actually even look at that episode. People are like, blown away by yeah. brain fm oh right? yeah oh they're like oh my god i just tried first time triers yeah because yeah. you get the 30-day trial right so yeah. which i think of course give them a 30-day trial so they can see and people underneath are like this is a trip yeah. i put it on five minutes later i felt like i was so focused or this put me right to sleep and i'm reading all the comments i'm like oh this is really cool it's Don't so you funny and all the negative ones it it's just people that were like oh they just refuse to try it and it's like well you, you can't really have an opinion yeah. You know, like I get it. It sounds crazy and it sounds It'll like, blow your mind. Try but, it out. But if you don't give it a shot, then like you can't really articulate. Well, you guys remember when we all first did it. I mean, we all had our own little I was hella skeptical. It, dude, yeah. it's it's pretty powerful. And I had never uh I'd never done any of that, like because it was there calm <coughs> and some other brands that are yeah. out there that have like all these like yeah. kind of white noise type of like, you mm -hmm. know, apps or whatever. And I'm like, I've never been, you know, what whatever. I've never really been in any of that stuff. And I remember getting introduced to that. And try it for the first time and being like still skeptical. Yeah, I had like, to use it a whole bunch of times. Yeah, before. I had to use it a bunch of times before I was like, nah, it's not because of that, is yeah. it? And then, uh, yeah, five for five. I think it's that. And it's like, and it's one of the, the long before they were an actual paid sponsor of ours, it's, we all adopted it and have consistently used it now for, I don't know, when was it? Was it very beginning, right? First year yep. or two? When we were doing the podcast, we got introduced to them, and have, I've never not used that thing. We use it like crazy. No, it's I, interesting, like, this kind of goes along with this, but, like, uh, so we didn't have, like, white noise growing up, you know? Like, yeah. it wasn't even a thing, like, no. just to sleep. You just put it on one of the quiet. channels that didn't work on the TV. Yeah. That would be white noise. If, like, your neighbor's screaming, dogs barking, mm -hmm. whatever, like, it fucks up your whole night, you know? Uh, <clears throat> so I just, my hack was to put in earplugs, and then that, that became, like, my sleep like essential like i had to do that just because like i was in dorms and like <laughs> and it, oh, it, God. It, it to the point where at the, i can't go back like i have to like have earplugs it's just like sort of one of those things that's part of the ritual uh and i thought the same with my kids i'm like oh no they're gonna be like i have to have white noise because we started them with the white noise and then you know eventually brain of femme and things like that uh but it's actually my oldest he's not he he's now sleeping without you know, any, any, oh, good. And I was like, oh, good. It, I, I was a little bit worried, but also because, uh, you know, you don't want to be dependent on anything. Yeah. Have but, you ever had this happen? Because you know what happens to us? We do the same thing with the kids, with the younger ones, is the power would go out. Yes. And then the fucking, then the white noise out. machine or whatever would turn off. And yeah. it's like, oh, great. Yeah, now we we're, had that. Yeah. Now yeah. we're screwed. Although now we got a white noise machine that if power goes out, it works still because you recharge it or whatever. But, I was worried about that. So he just outgrew it. He outgrew it. Okay, good. Yeah, so that that was positive, you know. I use it intermittently, <laughs> right? So it's not an every single night thing for me. It's like I when I ha I know I'm like I when I go to hotel rooms, if I know that like it's going to be a hard night to exactly. fall asleep and stuff like that. It's an amazing tool for that, too. Yeah, and that's how I will that's how Dude, I will Speaking of sleep, man. So we finally got a good or a couple nights of sleep and then last night, so Jessica started finally getting back into the groove of exercise. So kids were terrible sleep, so she had no energy. Then she got sick. Then things kind of started moving in the right direction. So she's like, okay, I'm gonna start working out again. And you know, Jessica's, she just, her body responds like, she's got bodybuilder genetics, right? So she did a couple workouts and then she was feeling like hyped. And we had a pull-up bar in the house and she went up to it and just busted out some pull-ups because she was feeling good or whatever. But she has, I, I, I'm pretty sure I know what it is, but in, in the past, if she's kind of been a little reckless with certain movements, Later that day or the next day, she'll get this like radiating pain uh, down her shoulder, in her arm, in her neck. It can sometimes come up to her face. So last night, that's what happened. So she was in bed and just, it must have been hurting her for a while. Mm -hmm. And so she woke me up and she's like, I, my neck is hurting so bad or whatever. Because I can do some traction sometimes to take the pain away. And the reason why I'm bringing this up is uh, because there's a difference between, and this is good to communicate, there's a difference between nerve pain Mm -hmm. and muscle pain and thankfully i understand this difference having trained people for so long and actually having trained um a couple uh, doctors that were pain specialists who explained this to me and i've identified that what's happening with her and she has a slight herniated disc uh in her neck 
is probably what happens is she impinges the nerve a little bit and then she gets this nerve pain that kind of radiates. And that's what nerve pain feels like. It's more of this radiating pain that goes up and down. And then it, it can, moves, yeah. Yes. Down the kinetic chain. And it could feel hot. Yeah. It could feel tingly. Or it could just be this this constant pain and it could start to grow. Yeah. And I've identified this with her. So what I do with her is I get her, you know, she she lays a particular way. I'll I'll push on the muscles that are affected because they tend to tense up when this happens. Mm -hmm. That's what pain does, right? Pain makes you tighten up. So I'll work on the muscles and then I put my hands under her head as she's laying on her back and I do some light traction while she tries to drive her shoulders down because uh, my theory is that we're creating space for that nerve. Not in pain. And then of course that, that took care of it. But it made me think like, I should probably communicate this because how many people don't know the difference? Muscle yeah. pain, nerve yeah. pain. Oh, you know, I've been going through the same process and you even helped yeah. me a little bit with, yeah, that traction to help give me some relief there. And it's, it's like, it's sometimes it starts as almost a stabbing kind yep. of really intensive pain. And you're like, you know, and I know it's like, at first I'm thinking <clears throat> muscular because of what I've trained or, you know, positions I've held throughout the day. And then it's like, I'm just stiff and it's probably restrictive. And I go through this mobility and then you realize I'm like, this isn't really <laughs> solving much. Uh, and, and to then kind of take it the next level. So yeah, you bring that relief from a potential impingement or something in that regard uh, to then be able to do mobility on top of that and help to kind of reset and, and he, get your, and your here's how you know, right. like I was just going to say more important, Importantly, what are the clear flags of like if it if someone describes this this and this oh it, it tends to be radiating throbbing or or heat or tingly and then if you if you if it's if, if it's nerve if it's nerve and you do the right position so like Justin I, you know he he had this pain in his upper mid back and then it turned into his shoulder and down his arm yep. we were t it was after the podcast he was talking about it and then I saw him out there and he was doing like mobility and I'm like bro that's I think that's nerve pain so I did this like kind of traction position with him uh, on the bench. And I hear how I, how we knew was right afterwards, he Relief. felt better Yeah, yeah right afterwards. Like, oh, like, oh okay. okay. I feel so, I feel better Yeah, yeah. with this. And but. if you have like an overtrained uh, tight muscles like that, you're not going to get in, you might get some, uh, a little bit of, a little bit of relief yeah. from it, but you're not gonna get instant. Like no, no, and it's not going to feel like this radiating pain that starts to go like sciatica pain is a very classic type of oh, nerve yeah, pain where yeah. it hurts very in your common. glute and then it goes all the way down your leg. Yeah. And you're like, why, why the hell is my whole leg hurt? You yeah. know, what's going on here? Um, I, I was, you know, I was really blessed. Now I'm thinking about it working, you know, in my studio, I had some exceptional pain specialists that I trained and, uh, man, I tell you, I, I feel almost guilty taking their money to train them because I would ask them all these questions about, about pain. And I would learn all these different things that I could apply to my clients, maybe really valuable, um, as a personal trainer. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So anyway, also, um, excited about Bellagio. I keep thinking about this. We're going to be in Vegas, Bellagio live event. It's a different environment. We've never done anything in an environment like that. I'm excited. This is going to be <laughs> yeah. great. I'm uh, excited. It's at 1 PM, right? Yes. Okay, good. So people are I coming love in the after Bellagio yeah. too. I'm glad it's there. Well, we're going to be there too. Good weather around that time. And I, the, the pool scene is what I'm looking forward to. So I like. You're going to do like a pool party? Fuck yeah. No, you're not. Yes. <laughs> a pool party? <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm not going to formally like throw a party, but I'm like, the, I will absolutely be at the pool. Have you ever things. been? So I've been, I've only been a couple pool parties. Can and you finally wear those Speedos with Ben Greenfield's face? <laughs> <laughs> I got to find those, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah. I got to find <laughs> those. Bought the, oh my God. It was the funniest thing ever that never happened i know, you know? i know yeah. so I I, I i've through. been to i've only been to a few i don't know maybe two or three pool parties like a vegas style and only one of them i didn't have a like a what is it called where you rent uh, a cabana a cabana never would i go to a pool party without a cabana yeah, yeah. what a nightmare mess you're just ugh, packed with everybody in the pool like what are you doing yeah, no, it's like the the young young kid thing. Yeah, right? you, do, you do that when you're 20 and that, that type of deal. Otherwise, it's like that's yeah, it's like when, when you, you don't mind that you're like this. You know, you're dancing yeah, the whole time. Yeah. Right? What am I doing here? <laughs> shoulder to shoulder. Yeah. In this, oh, in hey, this. you're having a good time. Yeah, I'm having a good time. Yeah, yeah. we're yeah. so much fun. Yeah, in, in, a, <laughs> in a suit Someone of bodily fluids. Who's gonna make the next run? You know, yeah, yeah. try to get the next. I mean, I I love all that stuff. So, but I I mean, I just like also if if I'm gonna drink, I prefer in the daytime. Uh, you know, it's hot out there. Being around that pool scene, there's always music DJ playing and stuff like that. So. Those are all good vibes. So 100%, we're 
will be in the daytime there. Yeah, but but I our have, event is not a pool party. No, it's not a pool party. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's in, it's indoors, Aww. everybody. But I, we will have a bartender though. I did. I think that's on the. I think that's on the list. Did we do us. that? Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure we have a bartender for the for the event, which will be cool. So you'll be able to. <coughs> I think we did that. I think we did that at Ohio. We've done that. We've done that at other events. Yeah, yeah. We did yeah. that at Ohio where you could like. I think that's cool. Like while we're talking, you can yeah. get drinks and stuff like that. And so. Yeah. No, I'm excited. It's been a long time since we've done this. I think Vegas, too, of all the places we've done, it's such a great place to meet because if you got to get on a plane, you got to fly somewhere. At least there's a lot of stuff just to, to hang out with us. Like, right. you know, for Are you going to gamble? Most likely. Yeah. I yeah. See, I, see, I don't like gambling, but I like watching you gamble. I did it once. <laughs> I did it one time. Go. Go. No, Go. it's a good time. I don't like gambling. I hate it. I hate it. I lose 20, I lose, I lose 20 bucks. I'm like, ah, I could have bought a sandwich. Yeah. But I, but, but I, I, one day, one time we were, I don't remember, I don't remember when were we, it was my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. And you were doing craps yeah, yeah. and I didn't know how complicated it was. And I was yeah. just sitting there like, oh, this is kind of cool. Yeah, you know, yeah. watching the I I appreciate, love Yeah, I appreciate the, the math in it and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah. I had yeah. no idea. It's been a long time, actually. Very long time. But I will gamble. never do it. I will never do it. Especially because when you're the one rolling the dice, you got everybody watching you. You know, I'm like, uh, what if I miss the table? I mean, it's so, <laughs> it's so uh, you know, for all the losses or whatever, it's so worth that time. If anyone who's played craps, like. I wonder if you're going to have less of a uh, um, hedonistic appreciation oh, because, of my, because my of the I mean, that would be funny. Wouldn't that be weird? It if you did it once, you're like, eh. I mean, I've already kind of worked on that one, right? That's why, I, I mean, I haven't, I actually haven't, people are asking me too if I've been sports betting right now and I haven't, I haven't, I haven't laid any bets. I mean, it's a, um, I don't know, it's an important exercise that I try and do right, <coughs> with, with myself, with things that are like hedonistic that I know are not healthy and not good yeah. behaviors for me is like, I always want to be able to prove that to myself. That it's not that I love it. I can admit that I love it. I enjoy it. It's a good time, but I can also walk away from it and not do it for an extended period of yeah. time. Like, so I haven't, I haven't sports betted in a long time. I haven't played craps in a really long time, but I still love, I still love both, you know, and I will absolutely enjoy. I, and that was something that might make me all of us together having a good time. You want me to do it. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, cool. then I'll, I'll have fun. Cause if you get around a table and one, all, one person gets hot in an hour, it's just a fun environment to be. I around. was there with you. Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, saw a little bit yeah, of yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. I'm the worst gambler because I'll, I'll take 50 bucks. If I lose it, I'm done. Yeah. As soon as I'm ahead, I'm done. Yeah. I'm like, oh, I made 20 bucks. I'm done. <laughs> Stop playing. Yeah, you purely look at it like an investment. Yeah, like, dude, like, oh, I, made right. my, I made double my return. I'm out of here. I'm out. Yeah. I don't want to play anymore. I was yeah. like, why did you keep playing? Because I made money. Why would I keep uh, playing? I used to get so angry like, and, and would find the dealer that uh, would keep beating me. And it was like, no, I'm going to get this guy. <laughs> competitive. Side. Yeah, all competitive. And that did not work. <laughs> they love you. They, they love, love a guy me. like that. <laughs> yeah. I stopped doing that. Trust me. Anger betting. Then, I'm sure that's a bad strategy for <laughs> exactly. any of this stuff. No, I'm excited. So I look forward to seeing everybody. It is live. I just I just sent it's over a message. It's mindpumplive.com where you sign up. Yeah, mindpumplive.com. Yeah. Paleo Valley makes grass-fed meat sticks. These are the best gut-friendly, clean protein snacks for travel on the go. It's high protein, delicious, no sugar. They're incredible. And again, it's grass-fed. They're not dry. They taste good. Go check them out. Go to paleovalley.com forward slash mindpump. And on that link, you'll get 15% off. All right, back to the show. First question is from Connor CGS. Is just weightlifting three times a week good enough for overall health and longevity? Also, does just li weightlifting affect your cardiovascular health in any way? Absolutely. I mean, it, first off, it's, any, more, it's more than that. Any form of exercise done appropriately will improve your longevity and your health. Okay, so that's true for all forms. But resistance training is quite unique in its adaptations and how those adaptations are beneficial for. Uh, the struggles of modern life, right? So strength training uniquely speeds up the metabolism or has a tendency to do so. So that gives you a buffer against um, the, just the, the access to food that we have uh, in modern societies. It, it encourages muscle building far more than other forms of exercise. I think that's quite obvious. And that is protective against being sedentary, which modern life is extremely sedentary. Even if you work out every day for an hour, the odds are, the most of that most of the day, the rest of the day is, is quite sedentary. So it's very protective against that. Um, muscle is also naturally insulin sensitive. So if you want to improve insulin sensitivity, which is very important uh, for things like uh, brain health, uh, you know, preventing yourself from getting things like diabetes, diabetes, <clears throat> like it's it's very it's a very uniquely positioned form of exercise for longevity when you place it in the context um, of modern life. And three days a week of strength training is plenty for most people for all those things. Two days a week, in fact, 
is plenty for most people for all of those things. Now, as far as cardiovascular health is concerned, yeah. I mean, one easy way to raise your VO2 max is to build muscle. Now, the, the, the challenge is that we look at the extreme forms of performance of different forms of exercise, and we look at them as examples. So people tend to look at bodybuilders. Uh, but it's extreme performance is always counter longevity. I don't care what you do. I don't care if it's endurance. I don't care if it's strength or whatever. When you get to those extreme levels, you start to trade longevity for performance. But for when it's done in an appropriate way, you're not pushing yourself to be a 250 pound shredded bodybuilder or whatever. Um, it's incredible. And the studies show heart health benefits. They mm -hmm. show uh, visceral body fat uh, benefits. They show, re you know, reduced uh, mortality, significant reduced mortality. In fact, uh, some studies suggest that strength training may actually be a superior form of exercise for cardiovascular health. There's, there's confusion around endurance yeah. and cardiovascular health. So if you're looking for like running endurance, you'll get more of that running than you will with strength training. But in terms of health and longevity, yeah, strength training. Well, especially that. if you follow uh, the way we've laid out uh, the, especially the first three core programs, Mass Anabolic, Maps Performance, and Maps Aesthetic, each one of those has a phase three or phase four in performance that is uh, got supersets, shorter rest periods, and and in and, and each one, like, levels that up. Like, so you get a little bit of that in Maps Anabolic, even with just some of the supersets, and then performance really starts <laughs> yeah. to ramp that up. And then Aesthetic has got a lot of superset and volume that are will, will can be very taxing and beneficial from a cardiovascular side. by shortening rest periods up uh, and in increasing in increasing reps you, you you that heart will get pumping and oh, yeah. that's all cardi cardiovascular is strengthening mm -hmm. the heart like training the heart right and doing by doing that with weights you get a lot of those benefits and to sal's point your heart's beating it's it's pounding yeah you know it's you're, you're getting cardiovascular benefit and you can even yeah specifically focus on that uh, with weight training and with a protocol that's a little more endurance uh, focused and so it's like you know, you could extend those reps to 20 reps and man is that an experience on its own uh i guess the differentiating factor is like uh, you know, if, if I'm specifically trying to increase my endurance of running, right. Yeah. And, and this is where it's like, yes, we're going to, we're going to move you over into figuring out like a running schedule where we can build that skill specifically, uh, but then complement it with weight training. Next question is from Polly proper pole. Where do you classify lunges? They aren't in the big five, but I'd love some insight into the value of them and their variations. One of the most valuable exercises you can do are, are split stance yeah. squats. Lunges are split stance squats. And when I say that now, everybody's like, oh, it's a it's it's part of the big five. A lunge is extremely valuable, uh, both in the stabilization stabilization of the back leg and the the pushing off with the front leg. It's one of I I, I would put it in one of the top ten exercises uh, you could do uh, overall for your body. So where would we put them? I mean, it's up there yeah. with some of the best exercise. Top some, 10, you know, somewhere up there. In fact, some coaches, athletic coaches, would place them above squats yep. for athletic performance because uh, they, they're they closely, they're more closely related to running. Well, I, I think it's, there's like an easier way to, I think, look at this, uh, but I guess it does take a little bit more understanding of, you know, exercises is we talk about the, the big five within the big five are <coughs> lots, lots of variations, variations yeah. of those big mm -hmm. fives. And so any of the variations of those big fives are incredible and would be considered up there in, in top exercises. Yeah. So you have like barbell squat, you have front squat, you have overhead squat, you have split stance squat, which would be a lunge, right? Those are all within there. Yeah, yep. exactly. So that so it, it would categorize as as one. It would fall in the category of one of the top five, even though it's not considered the top five exercises, as how valuable it is. And I even I don't know. I guess uh, again, following our programs, if you followed the traditional maps, anabolic maps, performance maps, aesthetic, we intermittently introduce all those lunges movements. are pretty stable on most of them. Yeah, they are pretty stable. And, and the thing is to, they all have different, <clears throat> I guess, uh, enhanced values. Uh, if I was to say for uh, like a backloaded squat, it's, it's the loading factors. It's, it's the fact that I can really, you know, load the bar and I can, I can be concentrated on the fact that I'm, you know, challenging my, my, my entire body that way. Uh, whereas with lunges, I'm a little bit more focused on stability control, uh, and also building up strength around, uh, having that split stance, which you're going to find in most 
scenarios uh, just in life in general, also sports, like you're going to be in a split stance position. How, how can I generate force in that uh, split stance position? It's that's, that's very valuable. And that's why you do see some coaches like, like prioritize lunges or split squats even more because uh, to be able to generate force in that and have strength in that position uh, is massively beneficial. Yeah. You'll see like when I'm, um, when I'm like in growth mode, build mode, get strong mode, uh, bilateral squats is like the foundational movement when talking about these two, right? <coughs> when I'm in a mobility, stability type of mindset, um, I love lunges because I love to do like a walking lunge, really stretch the stride out, really drive the knee over the toe, even have a little bit of a, a balance in between the steps. So I have a little bit of a st instability there. Like, so when I'm like focused on um, the stability, mobility and, and things like that, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make like, there's going to be lunges for sure in the routine. And then when I'm trying to really build a lot of strength and load and, and build and pack on muscle. And it's when I say that, it doesn't mean one of those doesn't do that for the other. It's just that that's the mindset, right? When the mindset is like build, grow, heavy, bulk, I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm bilateral, heavy barbell back squatting for sure. And that's the staple. And, but when I'm like focused on my mobility and range of motion and stability, yeah. Like uh, lunges becomes way more of a priority because I don't care that I'm, I just went through a phase Movement of potential. loading the barbell super heavy. Now this phase, I'm going to go through really stretching out the strides and the lunge and 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 stability and things like that. And so that's kind of how I determine how much of the, the lunge or squat is being focused on in my routine. Next question is from Marina Lifts. Why is the body so stubborn to respond to a calorie deficit after a long reverse diet? It depends who I'm talking to. And, and Doug, I, I want you to pull this person up because I want to look at them before I answer this question because there's a couple, there'll be a couple reasons for this. One, if we're dealing with someone who um, is, you know, gained and lost weight many times and they've lost a lot of weight, the, you know, there's a theory that the body kind of remembers um, where they were at. And so it could be more resistant to getting rid of stored energy because of the stress that it's been through in the past through this process. And so it could take a little longer. The other type of person is somebody who when they, yeah, and that's, this is the, this is the person. So scroll down, Doug more. Okay. So the other person is they get stubborn once you get down to a certain body fat percentage because you're lean. Yeah. And once you get lean, and for women, there's a range here, uh, same like there is for men. But once you get to a certain body fat percentage, your body starts to resist it because Espe you're already lean. Especially as a woman. Especially as a woman. Yeah. A female body is far more sensitive to getting too lean than the male body. Male body is sensitive to it too. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. But the female body always has fertility in mind and always has... You know, we may need to bear. Uh, you know, we need we may need to carry a child, and we need to be healthy enough to do so. Not having enough body fat, that's like a bad position to be in if you're pregnant and you don't get enough food or something happens. So, and that's this person here. I can see this right. I here. can so also you, tell by her her body type too. So, I have a client friend of mine that I'm always helping. I mean, she's, she's fit and lean. She, so. Oh, she's incredibly lean. She has abs. She has incredible shoulders, arms, legs. I mean, she's built like she's got a great physique. Um, but I, I, I can tell by her body type, she's she's built very similar to my <coughs> ex and the, the client that I was referring to, where they pack on muscle good. It's really hard for them to get super shredded and lean. And that's just, it's your body type. Your body type uh, can build. That's your advantage. Your advantage is you've got a great, great genetics for building muscle. Uh, you, your body doesn't want to be this tiny, petite, little lean, skinny person. Yeah. Like and once so, you get down to like 18, 17% body fat, it starts to fight. Yeah. It's going to, which it's, is lean by the way. That's yeah, really lean for like most women would be like, wow. Yeah. It's just, it's just going to fight. I mean, this is, it's so hard to, um, especially as a, as older, wiser trainers today to help clients like this when you know, like what's best for them. Right. And then, but you hear them out on what they want. Right. This is, and this is the struggle I have with this, this client yeah. that I'm kind of like referring to is like, you know, this girl's just like, she's jacked. She's strong as shit. She looks amazing, but she's like, I want to be, you know, bikini stage shredded, you know? And I'm like, why? Yeah. <laughs> like, why? You're, you're so strong. You're so fit. You look so great. And yet you want to just keep pushing that to push it. And then I understand the competitive side of want to do that. So there's the part of me that's like kind of helping her go that direction. But then meanwhile, always kind of re reaffirming like, 
you look great. You're unbelievably healthy right now. And what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to push beyond healthy for this, it's like for a, this look, for whatever reason, whether it's to get on stage or I've what. worked with guys like that too, where they're like, oh man, what is it? Like every time I get down to 10% or 9% body fat, it's like my body's so stubborn. It's like, well, you're lean, bro. Like once you get down to a certain body fat percentage, your body starts to fight it. And that number is different from person to person. There's a range. But, you know, once you get down to a certain body fat percentage, your body will start to resist it. And you can push past it. And now you're going past healthy. And now you're starting to move into a territory where you start to have the, kind of these unintended consequences or these or these side effects. So that's what's happening with this person that asked this question is your body's resisting uh, because you're down to a, a good body fat percentage. And maybe you shouldn't push past it. Next question is from Lift to Live. What direction or challenges is Mind Pump going or facing as a company? Mm. Nothing's more challenging than Sal. I knew it. <laughs> I was waiting for this. I did it on purpose. Just <laughs> I know. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just, just clear the air. <laughs> you know, we're, uh, I don't know. This is uh, we're we're all at a really um, uh, interesting um, point, and in, I think in our lives and in the business. In fact, we recently have, have this exercise that we're we're all doing as homework that we haven't come together and done, which is in five years, what's your dream, dream situation, everything financially, uh, time spent on work, time spent with family, uh, like, you know, what the company, what it looks like, the size of it, the businesses you're running. And so we, we've all actually tasked ourselves to, uh, to do this exercise. So it's an interesting one to, to think about on the, the direction is going, I mean, one thing's for sure. Uh, we love to do the podcast. We love to create uh, content and help coaches and trainers. I don't know if we'll ever stop doing that. I think we're all very motivated to continue to reach more. Like mm -hmm. we're always trying to reach more coaches and trainers. Um, we're trying to uh, to align with companies like the NASMs and Twenty Four Hour Fitnesses and stuff like that to try and influence even more of the trainer market. I think that's probably something that we probably would all agree on is a big, uh, you know what looking forward like diff that's different than what we've already kind of been doing a lot is <coughs> is getting really uh more into helping coaches and trainers and that was the 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 purpose of launching uh the trainer coaching program by the way the the we have a live free live training that's up right now for them yes yeah. yes what's the link to that Doug? do you have that it got sent over from steve mind pump oh for the yes the I, free training that we did the yeah three yes it's oh the free one is mindpumptrainercourse.com yeah so you get some free training for trainers now I, i'm 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 right with you adam i the responsibility that i think we all feel towards our audience is, is massive but when you take that audience and then you carve out the subset of the audience that's trainers the responsibility is is i mean it's ex exponentially bigger because we were trainers we were trainers we we identify with the challenges and struggles that coaches and trainers go through. We know what the passion feels like. We still have it. Mm -hmm. And then we know the, the, just the, the incredible feeling of accomplishment and how rewarding it is to really transform somebody's life in a positive way through health and fitness. So the responsibility that we all feel on our shoulders, when we talk to trainers and coaches, it's like, it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's crushing. It's like, we want to do such a good job. And we really want to help these people do a good job. And really, it's like, I mean, if you if you make the trainers in the world better or you help direct them in a direction that helps them become more effective, like you have shifted the industry. Yeah. You have really helped people. I think that's our focus because we want to equip uh, good personal trainers and coaches out there uh, to relay a lot of what we talk about on the podcast and to, you know, have those really individualized, personalized touches with with real life people and i think i feel like you know going to these live <coughs> events and we, we we were able to see that a little bit um you know temporarily and kind of see the impact like some things we talk about and what people get from it um but it, in terms of like us as a business i think that um that's that's a big new area for growth we're still looking for areas of growth i just don't think that we're cool with it you know we're here and we've arrived yeah. and, and end of story, you know, and I just don't feel like any one of us has that you as, know what our, I, as our formula. You know what I love about this conversation? This is, this is behind the scenes, right? We'll have conversations about the business and always uh, revenue, profits. It's always a part of the conversation if you're a business, right? That's, that's what keeps things going. But it always, it, it, it starts there and then it always turns into uh, purpose. 
Mm-hmm. Like, like, oh, this will make money or this will make more money or which decision do we make? Sometimes the decisions are really hard to make. Like, do we accept this revenue here, which is guaranteed, which is a big number, or do we take a, a chance over here where there's nothing guaranteed and we're going to start from scratch and it's a big risk, but, oh man, like the, 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 the purpose behind that, and the meaning feels different. Um, and so we, I love this. I love that yeah. we tend to we always, There's we always have responsibility. We, we always have these discussions. Our growth, we always you know? end up going with the one that feels right. We almost, we did, we don't go with the option that makes more money. Always. It's always the one that feels right. And that's, it's always worked out better. Yeah. I think there, the other variable that we have that's unique, uh, to work, like, just, I think currently where everybody's at in their life is also the, the, the balancing act of that with your, your home personal goals too. Right. Oh, so it's totally. like, it's like you have obvious, the obvious business stuff, <clears throat> like you're alluding to, which is, you know, revenue purpose, the why behind the business. <clears throat> and then you also have the understanding that, um, all of that takes time, effort, money, responsibility. Um, and it comes with that as challenge, stress, hurdles, setbacks, possible loss. Uh, and then uh, balancing that with like, uh, you know, fatherhood, being a husband, um, being around family, your home life. And so, and, and we're all at a place, I think in our life where, you know, that it's, we won't sacrifice that. And so, you know, strategically staying aligned with our why and our purpose and, and doing what we love while simultaneously, uh, not sacrificing the, the thing that we know is, is far more important to all of us. Um, because we have, even though to Justin's point that we're not the type of people to be like, oh, we've arrived, we're good. Uh, from a financial standpoint, everyone did. Everyone's in a place. Every, most everybody <laughs> was in a pretty good place before Mind Pump, but everybody is is okay now as far as you know their family is going to be okay forever and everything like that. And we did a good job early on of of setting the business up that way. Um, and so then you question your. We also have to add in that equation. Um, you know what does what do, what takes from this in order to do that? And so mm-hmm. it you know it's a fun challenge. It's a fun challenge yeah. and a fun thing to question and try and, and, and it's a solve. constant discussion you yeah know? And i think that it's a good one it's good to yeah it's good to uh have to, these discussions because um you know you, you want to you want to be driven you want to have purpose and um you want to find uh the opportunities you know throughout this whole journey and so that's i mean it, it, i'm always just kind of looking for that like i don't want to get complacent and feel like you know especially to like having the platform we have and um, being able to reach people uh, in a way it's it's it to me I see a lot of opportunity with you know the preventative side of just not just fitness but health in general right and so seeing how things are moving a little bit more in that direction is kind of exciting yeah well, la- last night we had a, a dinner with other founders and what one of the things that came up <clears throat> and and I and I don't even know if this is true but I speculated that uh, we have we have reached a point where and and one of the advantages of getting to where the business is at currently is having three other badass founders and leaders together in, in one thing, right? So that was a huge advantage uh, for us to be able to have other great entrepreneurs like that we could divide and conquer and scale all these things all at once. But there is this this feeling of we're we're close to being maxed out as individuals, and and if we're gonna take this thing to a whole nother level or add another complexity to it or layer of complexity, uh, needing not just, uh, employees or other people that work for us, but finding other potential leaders who actually can create, can, can, can troubleshoot, can overcome that have the same desires Mm -hmm. align with ours. If we're, if we're going to do that. And so that's a bit of a challenge we're facing right now. And 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 then the other challenge, Mm -hmm. Doug still hasn't gotten his diamond shoes that he's, he's always wanted. So (laughs) (laughs) we'll get you those diamond shoes, Doug. Okay. So your your little diamond shoes so you can run around. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Look, if you love my pump, request, <laughs> we have a free peptide guide at mindpumpfree.com. It's a brand new guide, totally free. It teaches you about peptides, the most popular ones, how they work, who they're for, who they're not for, their names and all that stuff. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpmedia and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 